Welcome to Santos Brothers Eats. Food worth mentioning. So let's get this started. And welcome back to Santos Brothers Eats. As usual, I'm here with my brother, Chef Jeff. Good day, hey, Jeff. Guys. How are you doing, Ken? And hope everyone out there is doing well as well. Yeah. So what we're going to be talking about today is actually two. These are definitely food worth mentioning. Right? And it's not it's mm-hmm. food that some of you may never have heard of before, or maybe you've heard of it and never um, wanted to try it or thought, that's ah, kind of interesting. But these are foods that we haven't had recently. These are foods that actually we've had in the past, and we've actually made videos of them, but they never made it to our YouTube channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk Correct, about... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about those particular foods, and then we're going to post those older videos to the YouTube channel. And the first one we're going to talk about is whale blubber. And I know that when I say whale blubber, a lot of people will kind of wonder what we're talking about, like whale blubber. They're like, is, is whale blubber, do people actually eat whale blubber? Is that for, you know, like who eats that? And so let's talk about that a little bit, Jeff. I know that you just pulled up some facts on that. Tell us a little bit about yeah. whale blubber. So just to let you know, whale blubber um, is um, it's a traditional Inuit uh, meal. So Inuit is an uh, indigenous people uh, from north of uh, northern Canada, uh, particularly Northwest Territories um, or Iqaluit. Um, so my little wife, Diana, she actually worked for a company that did tours in Iqaluit. And she had the opportunity to go up there twice uh, just to oversee some tours and get a, you know, a hands-on experience. Uh, on the product that she was selling. And on her last trip up there, she brought back to Toronto some whale blubber, or what they call muktuk. Muktuk. Um, and it's basically muktuk, yes. Yeah, and uh, uh, how long ago was this? Like, we'd say that was, oh, actually, we just uh, knew. It was 2016, because I remember seeing the video. Yeah, so four years ago. It was a while back. Exactly yeah. right. So I interrupted you. It's called muktuk. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, muktuk. Um, and that's, it's a very traditional meal up uh, for the um, for for the, the indigenous people up there, um, I know that there's you know a lot of people that talk about uh, whale killing is bad, but you got to think that they've been doing this for generations, and this is how they survive up there. And this is just generational and traditional stuff that they they, they do and do to upkeep their heritage. Um, so it's still done on the purpose of of feeding their families. Um, so basically, it's the the whale skin and the blubber attached to it. And it's very high in nutrients and um, protein. And they need that up there to survive the cold, cold winters and generally the cold temperatures all year round for them. Um, so the video will be out there soon. So when I got the piece of whale blubber, I didn't get much research on it. Um, I knew it was sort of a soy sauce. So on the video, you'll see, you'll see myself, Ken, my son, Dylan, his friend, Colton, were trying it. And for those of you who know what whale blubber is and have eaten it, you will notice that the chunks I have are kind of thick. They're maybe like half an inch thick, roughly. Um, and I do have soy sauce. And we tried it. And because the pieces were very thick, they were very rubbery and chewy. And we did have a, a small taste of the whale blubber itself, which is like like seawater, because that's what they swim in, and the soy sauce. But... We didn't really enjoy it that much. Um, Ken, what was your first impression when you had it? You know what? When I first put it in my mouth, I actually did like the taste, you know, because uh, seafood, you know, it's salty. I think it was salty also because the soy sauce was all over it. But it was very, very chewy. And part of it is because it was just because we didn't know how to prepare it properly. We just kind of cut it up and threw it in our mouths. Yeah you know, we just didn't enjoy it. And I, and we had just come out of a Korean barbecue. This was actually, you'll notice <laughs> in the video, we were at a Korean barbecue. We had come out, we were full. I had, um, I had a bunch to drink. So, uh, you might see that I'm acting a l- little obnoxious there. All right. So <laughs> just, just so that, you know, before you watch the video, so that you're aware and, um, off camera, I actually spit it out just because it was too chewy. I just could not get it down. I just, it was right. too big. Couldn't get it down. And so, if I understand correctly, like, are you supposed to eat it frozen, Jeff? Or are you um, supposed to slice it frozen? It's easier to slice it frozen. Okay. Um, so, like, again, this is our first time doing it. So you, you learn as you go. 
And unfortunately, we were the, we were the guinea pigs for, for the piece of whale bar I had. And then after doing more research, I discovered that you have to cut it nice and thin, like someone says matchstick length and, and thinness. Um, so that's what I did. And then for my coworkers, I brought the whale blubber to work and soy sauce and I cut it nice and thin. And it was more enjoyable uh, for, at, at that time. Again, because it's cut thinner, you could chew it more. It's not as chewy. Um, so you could get really bite into it and taste the, 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 the sea salt from it and the soy sauce, of course. And it was just more enjoyable to eat that way. Oh, so I, you know what? I forgot that you had, you had uh, shared it with your coworkers. Yeah. And so, it was, and so, so you got a chance to actually do it properly. Exactly right. So that oh, we did wow. it that way. And then I still had a big piece. And uh, one of our chefs at the college, uh, David Wolfman, um, he's indigenous as well. And he had, but he's not from a Calowit. He's, he's more Southern indigenous native, um, but he knew whale blubber. So I gave it to him and said, can you do something with this? And he says, of course I can. Um, and then in a few weeks, he actually pickled it uh, with some carrots and other root vegetables. And again, that's another way of, of preparing whale blubber. Um, I'm just reading here on Wikipedia is that whale blubber can be served, like we did raw uh, with soy sauce, or it can be also, you know, uh, breaded, deep fried, and served with soy sauce as well. So, like calamari, I'm, just, like, I'm guessing that's probably the closest thing you'll will will, 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 will taste and, and feel like when eating. Well, let me ask you something. Like, if you actually deep fried that, would it still be chewy, or would it just more be fatty? Um, maybe maybe more chewy because still chewy, even though it's still blubber, chewy. it's not like yeah, still chewy. Yeah, so it's, it's not like blubber. the fat on lechon. Then it wouldn't it wouldn't turn into that. Correct. Okay, I'm no, just no. making sure. Unfortunately, okay, because no. I was like, "Wow, if you, if if you just had like deep fried fat, I'm like, okay, let's let's line up for that, right?" But I, <laughs> I I'd be curious yeah, yeah. to try that, like, and I would be now. Did you have a chance to try um, David Wolfman's uh, pickled blubber, or did he just kind of with us for his family? Oh no no no, he he gave us a jar. Um, oh okay, and yeah, basically because the pickling it it did sort of reduce down the, the acid in the, in the pickling did reduce down the, the chewiness. It was still there, but it wasn't as chewy as before as the actual raw piece. Um, yeah. The acids would just kind of break down all the, te- like all the, all the, all, I was going to say tendons, but it's not tendons, but not tendons. you know, all the material would just kind of break down all the acids kind of, and just kind of soften it up a bunch more. And how was that? Well, yeah, it was good. Again, because the pickling, when you pickle anything, the pickling of uh, 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 liquid will take over the taste of what mm-hmm. you're eating. Um, so it did not really overpower it. Like there was a bit of, you still hit, uh, hit, uh, taste a bit of the sea saltiness, but the pickling juice also was melted in there. And like I said before, it, was, it made it easier to eat and chew because of the pickling process. It's pretty cool. And it's pretty cool yeah. that you had someone that, I mean, they're not from a Callaway, but still someone that's indigenous that was pretty familiar with it, that was able to prepare it at least somewhat properly versus what we did in the video. Exactly and right. If you think about this and the, like this whole pickling process is that, you know, however they get a whale, there's a ton of blubber. And if this was generational, like, you know, they don't always have a fridge or they got, they need some way of preserving it. So pickling sounds like a perfect way right. to preserve it. And that way they still get a bunch of protein. Mm-hmm. They still get a bunch of fat and it's just all in a jar. So if they need it later on, they, you know, there's not a whale handy that they have just freshly killed. They still have it in their storage <laughs> and it can, it could stay there for months, maybe even years, depending on, you know, um, you know, on the process. So that's kind of neat. And I did, and you may yeah. have mentioned that uh, you had someone pickle it, but I did, I, I totally forgot until you mentioned it now. So that's pretty neat. Right. Yeah. It sounds like, you know, you were able to taste it. First of all, you tasted it with me the wrong way, right? Mm-hmm. Let's face it. It was incorrect. The wrong way. You did it. Then you did it somewhat yeah. the right way. You, you sliced it thin and, and had it with your coworkers with the soy sauce and, and everything that way. Yeah. And it was better. And then you had it actually prepared by someone that was indigenous and it was pickled. And so you had it three ways. You know, I don't know when I'm ever, ever going to get a chance to have whale blubber again. And I really feel like, yeah, um, true. I didn't give it a good, uh, a fair shot you know, the way I ate it. And I wish that I could eat no. it again and try yeah. it. You know, I would love to try it the deep fried way. I'd love to try it pickled. I'd love to try it, you know, sliced thinly 
So uh, if I ever get a chance to either go to Callaway or Northwest Territories or something, or, or then I'd love <laughs> to try that again. So that's pretty cool though. You know, so exactly right. How would someone yeah. get whale blubber? Like, like do you have any idea? Like if they lived in Toronto, <sighs> like, like do you just, you just need to order it or something like this? I don't even know how to get it. If I had to guess, you'll have to order it like a specialty order. You know, that's, that's the only thing I could think of. Uh, let me just quickly go on YouTube and see like Toronto whale blubber, um, Toronto. Yeah. And let's see what they come up with. Actually, it's not even coming up as uh, an option right now. Uh, Rom, uh, you know what? Yeah, I don't see any. I'll go shopping. Toronto whale blubber. Nothing. There's just pictures. Yeah. So, so it looks like you, you can only get it if you have, if no people that are going yeah. up to Calowit or up north to get whale blubber. Yeah, and like wow. and Diana, Diana's no longer has plans to go up there, so we won't be getting that no. anytime soon. Unfortunately, not. Yeah, it'd be kind of interesting if there was like, you know, if you were a butcher or something, and you had some kind of access, um, and maybe there's someone that does, but it's certainly not advertised on on the internet currently. So right, yeah. Um, but I, you know, this definitely is food worth mentioning because yeah. I mean, we we you know we talk about it, and it's something that's, you know, pretty unusual. And uh, if mm -hmm. you have a chance to try it, you know, definitely make sure it's prepared properly. Otherwise, it'll just ruin the experience for you. Yeah. And uh, that's yeah. whale blubber. And um, can you tell us the the name of it again? How did how is what's it called uh, traditionally? Oh, muktuk. And how is that spelled? It's uh, M U K. T U K, Muktuk. 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 Yeah. Okay. That's right. So, the next, what we're gonna, the, the next piece of food worth mentioning is made from one of our favorite ingredients, right, Jeff? It is. Um, and if you know us, actually, we haven't really mentioned this that well, but we love eggs. Yes. Um, that's one of our favorite foods that, that we really enjoy is eggs. Uh, we like it. I, I like it I, with, the, with the yolk still running. Um, I think Ken does too. It's just oh, yeah. one of the things that we um, we really like. Yeah, it's it, it goes so far as that if the if the egg yolk isn't runny, I'm just like, what? like what? I just feel like it's a waste of egg. Like I just, it's just yeah. Like, why? Like unless it's scrambled or something. But if it's gonna be like yeah, like if 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 someone asks me what kind, how I want my eggs, I'm gonna say sunny side up just about every sunny side up. Yeah, exactly right. And I I like the scotch eggs are basically a hard boiled egg and it's wrapped in sausage meat and then breaded and then deep fried or baked. Um, so when you cut into it, sausage meat and egg, but now it's sort of evolved. And so instead of a hard boiled egg, people are actually putting a soft boiled egg in the middle. So you, you still get the sauce, like a, a scotch egg, when you open into it, you get the nice runny yolk as well. And I think that just elevates it, you know, a hundred percent right now, there I, I, I do gotta ask because when the yolk isn't as cooked it's harder mm -hmm. to, to peel the egg right yes and yeah. not only that i would imagine that it's also harder to pack the meat around it it is yeah so, it so takes, yeah it, it, it's gonna take a it's more uh, labor intensive to make a scotch exactly egg right. with a softer yolk oh yeah uh, so if if you're gonna have, do something like that either get some patience if you're doing it at home or mm -hmm. if you find a place that makes it, actually, I don't even know where to get Scotch eggs in uh, Toronto. You probably do, Jeff. Do you know where to get them? Um, to be honest, I, I, I've told you, I don't know where to find Scotch eggs. I'm sure if you if you Google it, Scotch eggs Toronto, they'll they'll you know places. Uh, but try to go for like a nice for for like upscale or like trendy uh, place to go, and and they should have the soft boiled version. Now, Scotch eggs, like, is that something you'd find at an English pub somewhere? Or yeah. Did, oh, yeah. Okay. Sure, yeah. Like, any sort of English or Scottish pub should have Scotch eggs on their menu. And that yeah, is that something sure. that's like an appetizer? Or is that a breakfast thing? Because I really don't know how that's served. To be honest, I think it's more of a, a luncheon thing. Okay. Um, and you get, like, it could be breakfast. You should have one for breakfast with, with a, you know, something. Um, or lunch, you have know, two with a salad, you know. But, you know, nowadays – most meals and most meal items are served at any time of day. Yeah. Um, and just the way you present it or the, what, what, we, what you have as a side, you know, th there's no hard set fast rules anymore uh, with food items. You can have it almost any time of the day, I believe. Absolutely. Yeah. So 
Uh, but, uh, you know, if I get a hands, you know, get a, get your hands on some scotch eggs, could you, you could probably make scotch eggs in the air fryer. Yeah. I, you know what? I did look that up and you can, yeah. um, yeah, cause it's nice high heat, um, just going all, all around it. Uh, you gotta make sure the sausage meat is cooked thoroughly cause the eggs are already cooked. So that's the only thing that you gotta make sure that the, the sausage meat around it is cooked properly. Um, yeah. So yeah, we kind of went off topic there when I mentioned the air yeah. fryer though, but no, that's all right. You know, yeah, and actually, go ahead. And actually, another sort of soft boiled uh, thing I want to mention. I, I I mentioned this to you, Ken, um, but uh, you, you know what a cheese souffle is, correct? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. It's a very like delicate dish uh, of egg egg whites, season some egg yolk, and then you put it into a bain marie or a double boiler, and then when it cooks, it 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 the the actual bubbliness of the souffle will rise above what's cooked in. It's very soft, very moist. Uh, one of the chefs at, at the college, um, one of those recipes was when he put the mixture in, he would crack an egg in the middle, top it off with more of the souffle mixture and bake it off. Mm, that sounds really good. And if, you, if it was done right, then still, still runny, cut into right? the souffle, oh. it was still runny. It was still runny. Um, Oh yeah, that was one of our favorite dishes. Sometimes the students, because we're college, and students would leave it in there too long, um, and it would be a hard boiled egg. But you know, it's one of those things where you got to, you know, just, if you touch it a bit. Oh, is it soft? I think this is soft, and you get it. But yeah, Ken, it was it was just delicious. You know, it was a cheese souffle as well. So soft. And what was this chef's name? Souffle. This chef deserves at least like a mentioning. What, what's this guy's name? His his name is Ian Grady. Unfortunately, he passed away about two oh, years ago. Ian. Um, Ian has Ian given Grady. us a but, great gift of a. Uh, yeah, and actually, he um yeah he, he's a he's a, he was a, a tremendous baker and a, a good friend, um and he actually also started a campaign years ago, called um, Piece of Cake, um so the college would make uh, Christmas cake to sell to, to the public. But then they would also, he initialized this, this uh, thing called piece of cake where he, they bake Christmas cake, but make it to one portion pieces. And then they would send it out to all the various uh, vets in Toronto um, as in, as in, you know, world peace. Oh, yeah. um, and it was, you know, it was tremendous. And, and all, all of the bakers and students came forward and really donated their time and the college would donate the ingredients for it. Um, but yeah, he was a tremendous baker. He did a piece of cake and he did that this amazing cheese parfait, cheese souffle with the heart, soft boiled egg in the middle. Yeah, he was a tremendous guy. Like it sounds, uh, it seems like that that particular dish, like any souffle, takes a lot of finesse, right? It does. Yeah. But like I said, we're college and you know we quote unquote would taste test the various items. And like I said before, some students would would get how to has done properly. Some students their souffle was a bit flatter. The egg wasn't was was hard boiled, not soft boiled. Um, but yeah, you're right. It it does take some finesse, it takes uh, finesse. to and do it's it. Almost a little bit of luck too. But I imagine like even those students that got it right the first time, they may not get it right the second, third, or fourth no. time. You know, and so exactly right. You know, this is a type of thing that you've got to make over and over again until you actually get that touch. And you know, you know that practice makes progress. Yeah. Practice makes perfect. And so, you know, it's yeah. just a matter of practicing and getting it and so like have you ever tried to recreate yeah. that jeff or no i have myself i i have yeah. made a souffle in a very long time yeah um so yeah i i wouldn't dare attempt to to, to bake to, to try it off either wow, um, it's just one of those things where it's like yeah no, and then, keep it in my memory for now yes absolutely and, and while we're on the topic of runny eggs i, I want to mention this because i don't know when we'll ever talk about this next is something it's it's something that i've never had and i've seen it on uh what's that show called master chef was it master chef that i saw it on it is the egg okay. yolk ravioli oh my goodness yes you're right so yeah. why don't you describe that uh, chef? ravioli and um again it's something that i've never made i made ravioli before like traditional ravioli with either vegetarian or, or meat in the middle so ravioli um make fresh pasta um, nice and thin, and you would put a filling in the middle, uh, in the middle of it, um, in a section. Fold the pasta over, and cut it, and then you put it into boiling water, let it cook, and that's your ravioli. I start with the sauce, but with egg yolk ravioli, you got to be more, uh, more gentle. 
because uh, egg yolks are very, very fragile. Um, and you got to make sure that when you poach it, you poach it long enough, make sure it's, 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 it's cooked as well. So it's a lot of technique is involved in making egg yolk, egg yolk ravioli. You got to know, know how to make a fresh pasta. You got to roll it to make sure it's, it's, it's thin enough. And then we have to get the egg yolk, make sure it doesn't, it doesn't uh, burst, put it gently in, in the middle of your, of your pasta, fold the pasta over, then gently seal the edges. So when, and when you got to do all that without escape. ever breaking that yolk. You got to do all that without breaking that yolk. Yeah. So yeah. So th there are um, ravioli uh, templates. So it does make a little indentation. So you put your pasta over. You, you take some past the pasta ball or your thumb and just uh, uh, impress the the pasta into the indentation. So it does make it easier that way. Um, so for both filling and sealing the the, the ravioli. Mm -hmm. But still, it's the technique of the um, of, of sealing it properly and poaching it long yeah. enough for the egg yolk to to, to cook off. Yeah, definitely and, a lot of too long. there. Um, and and also, yeah, not only do you have to make sure it's long enough, you got to make sure it's not too long because if it's too long, it just cooks the yolk, right? So you don't get that runny. Correct. Like you you, you kind of slice into that ravioli, and the and the yolk just kind of oozes all around everywhere. And I and uh, yeah. I know that we haven't mentioned this. We're only using the yolk here. So you got to separate the white from right. the yolk and then you take that yolk and mm -hmm. put it inside that ravioli pasta casing. And again, it takes a lot of finesse. And even once it's inside the casing, you got to gently lift that up, gently lower it into that boiling water, and then make sure you cook it the right yeah. amount of time so that the pasta is cooked, but the egg isn't overcooked. So it is a process. That's right. And I don't know if I'll ever get to eat that. <laughs> that's a, well, that's, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, and and if you want to do something similar, you could easily just boil pasta and just fry an egg and put it on top, and it's pretty close, but it's just not as fancy, <laughs> right? And, and I know that you've I, done I that fry before. It. I, I actually do a poached egg. Oh okay. yeah, oh yeah, you can you poach an egg if you want to, but yeah, uh, I, 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 I've I done that. that I've just taken eggs and put it on top of pasta and eating it like that, and using the yolk as the sauce. It's it, that's really good too. Yeah, but I've never had the actually, egg yeah. like ravioli. Um, but again, we, we went off tangent, and what we're here to talk about is uh what's called egg brulee um egg brulee and so it sounds brulee. a lot like creme brulee right it is yep. it's almost the same it's the technique of it is very different but uh a, a creme brulee basically is an egg custard and we've mentioned that before in one of our past uh podcasts but egg brulee is is sort of simple but a bit complicated at the same time it's basically a soft boiled egg you cut you peel it you carefully peel it, like Ken mentioned with, with the scotch egg. It's, it's well, hold on, hold on. hard. I to... really want to say it's soft boiled, but not soft like – like it's, it's more medium than soft. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go with that. Sure, yeah. So, yeah, we think yeah. soft boiled. You think of, of, of the egg holder and you crack it open yeah. and you eat it from, with a spoon that way. Yeah, it's not um, bad. But it's, yeah, it's this firmer is more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you, you actually peel the egg with yeah. the soft yolk in the middle. Hmm. So, um, but yeah, basically, and, that, and then once you, once you cut it in half carefully, then you put a bit of brown sugar on top of the, of the, of the cut half, the, the egg yolk, and take a blowtorch and just torch it until the oh, sugar is well, you gotta brown. Think, you got to mention that you put sugar on it, right? So you put sugar after you yeah. cut it in half, and then you torch it. And actually, um, it, That's th right. we do have a video that we're going to be posting on the, um, on the YouTube channel of Jeff actually preparing the, the egg brulee and so you'll be able to see right. how firm that yolk is because you might think oh you oh, cut yeah. it in half like when the when the yolk spread all over the place it's a little bit firmer than like a really runny yolk so the, the yolk doesn't just go all over the place right. but it's certainly not a hard-boiled egg no yeah no and yeah uh, it's um in the in the industry it's it's known as um, a 65 degree egg so oh. if, you, if you enjoy ramen that's what they use. They, 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 they carefully poach eggs in, in, a, in a certain temperature of water for, for so many minutes. But because most of us home cooks don't have that access to a sous vide or a proper thermometer for that, a good technique that, that we use for this video is you basically bring water to, bring water to uh, put the eggs in the cold water, you mm -hmm. bring it to a boil, and then as soon as it comes to a boil, turn the water off, leave the eggs in there, uh, for about five and a half minutes. 
Okay. Okay. And really, and set, a, really set a timer for this. Don't just free ball exactly this right. one. Like, like really time yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. If you want your eggs perfect, then that's what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, once the five minutes are done, get a bowl of cold ice water ready. Get the eggs out and put those eggs right in the cold ice water. This is what's known as blanching. It's a technique that you use for everything from vegetables, uh, most of it, and potatoes. So what, so what kitchens do, they, they par cook a lot of vegetables on the side and they blanch it right away. So when it's service time, they take the, the items from the cold water, saute it in some butter or oil, and it reheats and it's ready for service. So again, it's blanching. And let it cool down for a bit, stop the cooking process so the yolk is where you want it. And then Ken mentioned how hard it is to peel. Take it out of the water, just slowly tap it on a counter and sort of peel it in the water as well. The addition of the water will, will, will help you peel the eggs safely without uh, taking away any, any of the white that's surrounding the eggs. Yeah. Yeah, so that, the, yeah. And, and, and if you try and peel it while it's still hot, you're going you're gonna to regret it. So mm -hmm. make sure that it's, it's cooled down to stop that cooking process because it will separate from that shell a lot easier. And while we're at it, I would say that you're going to want to make extras because you are going to screw some of them up. That's oh, just yeah. what's going to happen. So if you're planning on having, you know, six eggs, you know, maybe boil 10 or, or maybe eight. Yeah. You know, just so that you, you end up with the six because you're going to screw oh, for sure. you, you know probably your first one you're going to screw up and maybe another one along the way that when you do that and then um exactly right you, we cut it in half and um on the video we actually used uh so, oh. dental floss didn't we or fishing line to cut that egg yeah. in half so yeah, yeah. well yeah we, we used uh, we use a dental floss but don't use a flavored dental fl floss no uh, mint. you want to try to find yeah no mints no berry just a nice plain dental floss you need a thin thin string uh to cut it properly you could mm -hmm. use a knife but of course the knife would take away most of the yolk that you want to savor yourself. So yeah, the, the yolk may, may stick to the knife and then actually as you're cutting, it might squish the egg. And so the floss is just, just yeah. gentle enough to, to cut through without damaging the egg. That's right. Yeah. Um, and you see the video, Ken is the one that's holding the floss night and tight. And I just put the egg right in the middle and gravity and a little force of hand and the egg cuts nicely down the middle just perfectly as you want it. So this is good for something like if someone likes deviled eggs, I would imagine you'd like egg brulee. Um, yes. And I would, you know, deviled eggs is a longer process, um, but egg brulee, I guess, takes more skill. But uh, yeah. I think egg brulee would be faster to make if you knew how be. to do it. Oh, yeah. Um, but I, I like both deviled eggs and I like egg brulee. There is a little bit of sweetness because of the sugar. But I'll tell you... Mm -hmm. um, Egg brulee is probably one of the favorite ways I would eat eggs. Uh, and I love, and as, as, you, as we've mentioned before, I love eggs. Like me and my brother, we, you know, eggs are yes. phenomenal. Uh, I have them just about every day and not just one. And for those of you that yeah. think, oh, well, there's a lot of fat in, in eggs, and a lot of cholesterol. Um, I don't know. It was about a year ago that Weight Watchers added eggs to the, to the points list, to the zero point list, meaning – it, oh wow! Yeah, I don't. know. Did you not know that, Jeff? Maybe I maybe I mentioned it to you. I before. did not know that. No. Yeah, those are actually considered okay. zero points. And maybe someone listening to this that is on Weight Watchers saying, "Oh no, Kenny, they changed their mind again," or you know, you're saying it wrong. <laughs> but you know, hard, no, we're talking about hard boiled eggs are zero points. I mean, they're they're packed with with fat, protein, and calories. But for whatever reason, you know, um, you could eat as much as you want because of uh, yeah. just the, I don't know how it works. But they're zero points, so. I like that. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure zero points, like you said, but it's, it's, it's either a, a poached egg or a boiled egg, like not deep fried or not pan fried with a lot of butter or oil. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Just, and that's certainly just not like itself. a, yeah, certainly not a scotch egg, you know, it's covered in sausage. That's yeah. not, that wouldn't be a zero point. Or, 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 yeah. Or, or, <laughs> or a hollandaise, you know, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah that, yeah, that would be throwing it off. You can't just have eggs and toaster, even if you put ketchup on your eggs that, you know, putting uh, carbs, carbs into the mix would totally wreck that point system up. And so, uh, but back to the egg brulee. Exactly right. If, if you like creme brulee and if you like deviled yeah. eggs. So the egg brulee, so. I would try that, you know, uh, give it a shot. It, it takes a little finesse, but once you, once you do it, you're, you're, you won't regret mm -hmm. it. Cause it's not only is it fun to make, they're fun to eat. Um, they take no. a little bit of time, but, and they're eaten very quickly because it's just half an egg. It's one bite and they're done, but they're good. They're way yeah. good. Oh, yeah. That is. So, yeah. So, we got uh, whale blubber and uh, an egg brulee. 
Yeah, and those, you know what? Well, blubber is certainly food worth mentioning. And egg brulee, that is food worth mentioning too. That is something that I look forward to eating. It's been a while. I mean, it's been years since I've had egg brulee. It has. We should do that one of these yeah. days coming up here, Jeff. Have some egg brulee. Yeah, it's we not, should. We should, yeah. Not too hard to make, um, but uh, we should do that. But that no. is certainly this week's food worth mentioning. And we will be looking forward to what we're going to be talking about next week. We're going to be talking about food worth mentioning next week, aren't we, Jeff? Yes, that is correct. Thing. And then until next time, remember this quote from Julia Child, people who love to eat are always the best people. And that includes my brother, Chef Jeff, and of course me, and then you as well if you love to eat food worth mentioning. All right, thanks a lot, everyone. And we'll catch you next week. All right, take care, everyone. All right, that was a pretty good episode. Yeah. You've been listening to Santos Brothers Eat. Food worth mentioning.